Shall we begin? Let's begin now. Hi there, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to a build that I have been looking forward to for a long time. I've had this kit well over uh, a year, year and a half and I've just been itching to get my hands on it and get this one built. This is, I ain't, gonna, I ain't even gonna try and pronounce it, but I'm just gonna call it the Mindy uh, 52. That's what it is, the Mindy 52. It's a big workhorse of the German army. Now this is going on to the diorama that I'm uh, building. We've already done the flat cars and the flat guns. Uh, this is actually going to be towing the uh, 60 inch mortar which you can see just down there in the background it's a well a tank no it's a tracked mortar uh, they used them in the battle of uh, well the siege of uh, Bastogne I think it was yes uh, I'm, I'm almost positive but it's all going on to one big track and that's about all I can say so let's I just want to get into the box we'll get the instructions out and we'll get started on the build all right to the instructions and um, as you can see I've already been making little notes on the front and the corners are very dog-eared where I've been uh, going backwards and forwards through it just uh, sort of preparing myself now the first two pages is just uh, sprue maps which is very useful. Uh, step one and step two on the instructions um, basically concern with making the base up. Now, I won't be using the base, so I'm not going to be building the base because I'm just going to be using the tracks directly onto my diorama and we're going to be using uh, loose ballast around it. So we're going to skip them totally. And then we move on to step one of the actual engine itself. Now, I'm gonna do this one step at a time, get it all assembled, and then we'll have a look, uh, a quick chat if there was any problems, any aggravation. The names of the parts, I don't know. We're gonna learn this as I, as I go along. It's gonna be interesting. So, with that little introduction into step one, I'm going to get on with step one and uh, I should be back with you shortly. Okay, step one. Now, step one, very easy. There was nothing to write home about, no issues or complaints. And it, this is going to be huge. Hang on, let me just bring a ruler in. Uh, that's a 300mm ruler, so what's that? Maybe about 370mm in length. So it's going to be a bit of a big build. So, like I say, nothing to actually complain about or moan about. So with that, we'll put that to one side and we'll turn the instructions over. Now, all we seem to be doing now is putting leaf springs on and the connectors, uh, the front plate with the buffers on. So nothing too mad. So I shall get on with this and then I'll be back in a minute. Now part two is completed and that is all these little leaf springs running on both sides of the actual lower half and the front plate and buffers. Uh, any issues? None at all. Everything went together lovely. The only one thing I will say is I had slight difficulty uh, getting these connecting arms to join. Uh, what inside of these is two lot two little nipples and this arm pushes down and there's a uh, like a little ringlet just there that it actually sort of locates in and I was getting pretty frustrated because it, it was rather difficult uh, trying to force them in so all I did I got my scalpel and just cut one of the nipples off one side on all of them and they dropped in and located lovely so that was the only thing so that's all done uh, so we'll put smooth that to one side for a second 
and we will turn the page. Now step three, uh, there's a lot going on in step three. This is, a lot of this is the assembly for, to, for the boiler support, I would say. There's lots of bits and pieces going on, so this is gonna take me quite a while. So, I will continue on, and I'll get all these boiler supports put in, uh, these bottom plates. Uh, I'm not quite sure what this is for, uh, but we will find out uh, as we go. It looks like some sort of braking system, but I'm probably wrong about that. But uh, I'll get all these assembled, I'll get this all assembled up, uh, then I should come back and uh, we'll take another look. Right, all them bits have been put on. All went together nicely, no fit issues, just the standard sanding, dry fitting and gluing. Uh, pretty impressed it's starting to build up nicely now I like these layers uh, you get more and more detail on each layer so with that we'll move that across and we'll turn the page and we'll move on to the next bit now I'm still sort of building in the dark here because a lot of this I don't know what it is but we'll follow the instructions and uh, hopefully most of these bits will become apparent at the end now, uh, what we've got to do, uh, we've got some, some type of pistons to go on the end here. We've got some uh, joining brackets for the uh, lead springs, not too difficult. The assembly of this end plate, I do know what that is for. That's to hitch the coal tender up, so I do know some of it. Uh, making the pistons up, haven't got a clue what this bit is, can't help you on that bit. And also we've got some tanks. Now they look like pressure tanks to me. I don't know if they're for the brakes or something like that, but uh, somebody probably will let me know. So I'll crack on and get all these bits put on and I shall be back in a second and we'll take a look. Right, we're back with the completion of uh, part four, or step four should we say, which was the tanks, this end plate, pistons and other bits and pieces that went on everything went together lovely the one thing I will say is I made a bit of a tit up halfway through this I actually put this piece at the end here in upside down which caused a bit of problems to get this uh, back plate on I did go through the instructions and it's not gonna interfere with anything and it's not gonna look odd uh, when it's all finished luckily so I didn't really have to take it all apart but it's just a, a little pointer you know just keep your eye on the drawings I didn't and messed up but that's the way it goes so enough of that we're gonna move on I'll put that out of the way just for a second we will turn the page and we're going to be getting on now mainly with the the driving force of this uh, uh, locomotive and that's these front uh, pistons on both sides uh, what else we got well that's mainly it it's mainly the assembly of them and the I, got, I would say that's something for the front bogey for the four small wheels that go at the front uh, it's just bits and pieces that are going on. Uh, these are the main t uh, two bits uh, are the pistons. Now, I'm going to get on with that and uh, I shall be back with you in a second. Part five, it was the assembly of these huge great big power plants that uh, sit either side of the engine. And they are big really when you actually look at them. So they're all being fitted and done there's been these little mud guards being put on as well both sides also uh, the connector at the front for I would say for the brake hoses in case it's pushing something and also underneath I've put the piece on for the uh, front I would say it's a steering bogey I suppose with the four little wheels on so that's all done and complete uh, issues none everything went together lovely no problems at all.
just the standard sanding and uh, messing about. So now I'm going to move that out of the way. Put that across there. And we're going to move on. Now, this is where it, uh, it starts to come a little bit difficult. Now, this is the uh, driver's cab. And there's a lot of detailing to be done on the inside. So my plan of action is that I'm actually going to assemble all this up. Uh, I'm actually going to put the windows in get them masked up, get the windows in uh, position and also I'm going to be jumping ahead onto step 7 uh, because step 7 is the doors go in, the glass in the doors so I want to get all this done and ready for uh, to be painted so I can paint the whole lot then assemble it all together and the same with the roof as well I will get the the roof assembled all them bits and pieces so they can all be painted and I can actually make a complete finished unit there but I will come back to you when I've got everything ready before I go into paint and we'll have a quick look so I'm gonna get on with that then okay we're back with the cab now I've assembled everything that I can assemble and if I just move this out of the way for a second and get in there shift that out uh, the actual cab itself I've done the masking on the windows put the doors in I've put the seats in all the little bits and pieces so I can just get this all sprayed out on the inside the actual uh, bulkhead or firebox head that's got all the parts on so that will get a spray as well and then I can detail that all up we have plenty of little uh, parts that need to be sprayed and either done in brass or copper. Uh, I'm not sure what should be in brass and what should be in copper. I'm just gonna use my artistic license on that. Uh, this is the back section. That's got the windows in as well. Uh, all masked up. And the actual roof, it's uh, the roof section. There is a little glass bulb uh, to go inside there which I will put on uh, when I finish doing all the painting. Now I will say one thing, it's very well detailed as it stands and it comes out the box. You can buy uh, PE, a lot of aftermarket for this. If you're really gonna do a lot of mega detailing, there is quite a lot of uh, injector mark pin marks on the inside which you'd need to address if you're gonna do it uh, like a, a, a major display piece. I'm not going down that line because this is gonna be part and parcel uh, of a bigger thing and you're not gonna get that close to really, well, I don't think it, it warrants really spending a huge amount of time on the detailing. But I'm still gonna do quite a bit of detail on it uh, just for my own uh, personal satisfaction. So on that, I'm gonna take this lot now and get it painted. And the next bit you're gonna see, hopefully, it'll be all together and the detailing finished. Okay, we're inside the cab now. Uh, I've done as much as I'm gonna do. Uh, I've kept it down to a minimum because you don't, you're don't. you not gonna really see a great deal just looking through the window, but I wanted something there. Uh, you could actually go a lot more uh, around the firebox, rust, dust and dirt, and you could keep going on forever. I was very, very tempted just to keep going, and then I thought, no, stop, uh, don't do any more because uh, you're not actually going to see it. But all I've used on this is the AK True Metal, uh, the copper and the brass, just to give the brass effects, and the dials and that have just been touched in with a bit of paint and roughly that is it and I'm quite happy with it it looks okay so that's the final look now I'm going to get it all battened up and we'll get moved on to the next bit now that's the cab almost I'll say almost complete as a complete unit there's still a few little tiny bits that I need to do on it unfortunately I can't do it because I need my PE bender which I am still waiting for uh, 
this particular PE, there's some very, very fine bends to be done. And I know through experience that I can do the large bends with tweezers and a small pair of pliers. But these fine bends, you really need a PE bender. So I'm putting that to one side uh, until that turns up and then I will get that done. The PE basically is going around the windows on the top and on these bits here. So it's, it's nothing too uh, major, but uh, it's something I actually can come back to a bit later on. Now, we'll put that to one side. So we're now completed from seven, right up to step eight so we'll move on from from there because the driver's uh, cab is finished and we're going to be moving on now to the actual uh, firebox so i'll get this all assembled and then i should come back to you and we'll have a little chat back with one completed uh, firebox uh went together all right I had to do a little bit of filling on basically the seam lines linked to MAD. Uh, mind you, a lot of the filling was more me than anything else. But all in all, it went together nicely. No issues, no problems. So we'll put that to one side and we'll move on. Uh, turn, turn, oh, turn the page. All right, now we start assembly of the actual uh, boiler itself. Uh, boiler, the front door, uh, smokestack. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that is for, but I know it will take all the uh, pipes that run down to the, uh, I think it's the brakes. Everything's the brakes with me at the moment. Not sure, I, I ain't gonna commit myself, but we'll get this all assembled and uh, then I'll come back and we'll take another look. Right, as you can see, I've assembled the uh, actual boiler and connected it to the firebox. Now, I took the liberty of connecting the actual driver's cab to it as there was one complete step uh, in the instructions on just fitting the cab to the firebox and boiler. The one step as well did include putting these little bits on the top nothing too fantastic so as i was going to uh, bed i thought i'd glue the whole lot together give it a good chance to cure up overnight until i got back to it uh, all went together nicely no issues uh, normal sanding and bits and pieces like that nothing unusual really gone together really nice and i'm really happy with it now We'll just put that to one side for a second. Oh, we'll put that across there out of the way. Disaster waiting to happen. Now, all this bit being assembled, which is uh, step 10. And as you can see, on step 11, it was just mainly putting the driver's uh, station onto the boiler and three little bits. Uh, to actually put on so they've all been done and com completed which moves us on to step 12 now step 12 is actually fitting uh, the top half to the bottom half and being inquisitive as you do I set it up on the top to have a look to see what it looks like and it threw up a problem uh, which I have rectified but I'll bring it in we'll bring the bottom half in now the problem being everything sits nicely sits on the front sits on the back correctly but in the center here we've got two supporting brackets to the boiler sits on and it was a millimeter off the boiler and I couldn't work out for what reason it's a millimeter off. So I went back through the instructions and I checked everything that I've done just to make sure I hadn't done something wrong. 
and I couldn't find anything because I thought there might have been two small, well, four small brackets that actually fitted on the top, and I couldn't find nothing. There was nothing at all, and it just seemed strange that it was an equal amount. It was a millimeter. So what I've actually done, if you can see, I've actually cut a strip of styrene, one millimeter thick, uh, the width of these brackets, and I've actually glued them on. I'm going to sand them off. Uh, we'll file them down and shape them up uh, so they look neat and tidy and then the boiler actually does sit nicely on top and it, it touches every area that it should do now I'm hoping it's a fault with them and that the, the length of that has been made a millimetre too short because there is a, along the side of the boiler like a side skirt that fits on so I'm hoping this one millimetre isn't going to cause problems later on uh, fitting the side skirt but we'll have to wait and see for that. So all in all I'm quite happy with the build. Uh, this little problem, yeah, it's a little problem, uh, we can get over it, that's what, we're, that's what we do modelling for. And I'm going to call this video now uh, quits and put this one out so you can see where we've got, where I've got to and uh, part two will be coming very very soon well actually as soon as I put this video up we'll be making part two and uh, with that little note I'd like to thank you very much for joining me and hopefully we'll see you on the next bit This is not a drill. Repeat, this is not a drill. Is that all you got? Let's begin now.